Islam and politics, two sides of the same coin, or as the author puts it, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, two expressions for the same meaning. This phrase, as we concluded yesterday's episode, while we were touching upon some of the key points in the book, Politics, the Very Heart of Islam. This topic was discussed with my dear guest and esteemed guest, Dr. Zahir. Welcome back, Hi, Doctor. Welcome back. Allah uh, khalikum. Yesterday, we touched upon various things uh, regarding politics in Islam and Islam in politics. Now, we did say that you cannot separate the two. They are inseparable. And if you want to separate one, just like one uh, right now in the United States or somewhere else, they try to separate the church from the state or the state from the church. In, in our case, you cannot separate them because one completes the other. Without one, you cannot move forward uh, with, with only one side. You need both sides. However, compared to the previous episode, I would like to focus on uh, the idea of the Prophet wasallam, the conduct of the Prophet and Imam Ali and Talib, and compare it with modern day politics. Of course, keeping in mind the circumstances uh, that were present during that time. Yes, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. Um, yes, in, in, in this book, uh, uh, the author begins with uh, highlighting a number of um, uh, cases, instances where uh, it reveals the conduct of uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi mm -hmm. and uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of Sayyid al-Imam Ali alayhi salam, um, how they uh, behaved towards uh, uh, their opponents uh, or uh, those who threatened them mm -hmm. uh, or though the, their would-be killers or uh, those who conducted um, uh, in a way, behaved in a way and committed acts which uh, deserved um, punishment in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, we begin uh, with one case, uh, the case of Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, towards his uh, would-be killer, uh, Abdurrahman bin Munjim al-Muradi. Mm -hmm. um, it is narrated that uh, um, the Imam used to say it frequently through his knowledge of the unseen mm -hmm. uh, and the knowledge that has been passed on to him from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which in turn has been passed on from uh, Archangel Jibreel uh, that he used to tell uh, Abdurrahman ibn Muljim that uh, you would kill me even though he used to express his um, 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 affection for, for the Imam he used to say he likes the Imam, mm -hmm. and but Imam used to tell him that eventually you will you will kill me. But keeping that one thing in mind, that even if someone doesn't have the intention of killing you, yeah. you always tell them you are the one going to kill me. Mm. Yet that individual is showing affection towards me. Mm. You know what I mean? So when you say that to someone, it's either he's going to kill you or die in 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 some way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, doesn't that form the murder mentality within Ibn Muljam? that resulted in the murder of Ali Talib? Um, well, no, I, uh, it's um, basically at that time he, uh, he didn't have any, any, that, any of that attitude towards the Imam. He knew who the Imam is, was. He knew uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib and his, his, his virtue and his status. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he never thought uh, uh, that he would uh, commit such uh, act against Imam Ali alayhi salam. And uh, it was only uh, during the last uh, uh, short period of time mm -hmm. before the conduct that he, he was led uh, to do that and he was enticed by various individuals mm -hmm. um, to do this act. And f in fact, up to the last very last uh, moments, he he found it very hard to do uh, because he knew who Ali ibn Abi Talib was. Um, it was, uh, 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 if you like, uh, uh, a last-minute decision 
that he decided to act, to do this treacherous act, which is to kill him. I don't know Ali. if it's last minute, because they mm. planned it. The, the Khawarij, the people who were bound against the government of Ali al Talib, they've planned it. They, 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 the had, that, they yeah. had that in their mind. Yeah, the Khawarij didn't uh, plan uh, this. Uh, he was one of the Khawarij, but the Khawarij didn't plan it. So they weren't and the ones that murdered Ali al Talib? Pardon? Were they the, so they weren't responsible for the murder of the Khawarij? No, no, not the, all the Khawarij. I don't want to go off topic, but yeah. you know, this is it's something related to, to yeah. the story. Um, not all the Khawarij. As I said, he, is, he was one of the Khawarij, in, and he, and of course, some historians say that uh, uh, agents of Muawiyah were behind it to entice him to do that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so um, um, he wasn't. Um, uh, sorry, he, the Khawarij weren't involved. Not, not that the entire body of the Khawarij were involved. He was alone, and uh, as I said, uh, with agents, along, according to some historians, with agents of, of Muawiyah. Mm -hmm. But the point is uh, that uh, Imam Ali, um, the point of this argument is that Imam Ali did not embark on any conduct uh, to prevent him doing that or to uh, preempt. Uh, his uh, behavior by, for example, killing him or stopping mm -hmm. him from doing that. Because Could he put some sort of supervision over <coughs> it? I'll, I'll come to that. Yeah. Um, um, because, and, and in fact, people did say, uh, his companions did say that if he uh, um, um, is going to kill you, then uh, we should kill him, we should eliminate him. He, said he stopped them from doing that. He actually, I mean, not to that extent. You know what I mean? Uh, he he stopped them from doing him. that because uh, he said um, uh, uh, he hasn't done anything to me yet. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done anything wrong yet. And therefore, we have no right to, uh, to punish him in any way. Mm -hmm. And uh, they insisted and he said, well, do you expect me? That's the statement. Do you expect me to kill someone? who hasn't done anything to me. Um, the importance of this issue is that uh, this leader, uh, this Islamic leader, Imam Ali alayhi salam, although he knew that who his would-be killer, uh, who is uh, would-be killer and that Abdul Rahman ibn Rujim would kill him eventually one day, he did not uh, uh, take a preemptive strike and sort of uh, uh, kill him. He left him to but his own accord. Not, not to uh, the extreme measures, though. Uh, I'll come to that. I just want to make the point that uh, in Islam we don't have uh, this notion of the end justifies the means. Um, contrary to that, uh, we have an expression which says, "La Allahu min haythu yu'sa." Allah is not obeyed through any act of disobedience. If, for example, the act of uh, establishing uh, an Islamic system of government or preserving an Islamic system of government which is an obedience to Allah. And we are not allowed to do that, to preserve the Islamic system of government or to establish the Islamic system of government through disobedience, through killing an innocent person. Uh, um, we, we don't have that in Islam which is the end justifies the means. Uh, on the contrary, we have this, that we cannot do something wrong in order to do to achieve something which is right. We don't have that option in Islam. Now, coming back to your point, which was not the extreme measures, but we could be supervised. The, the, the regular measures? Yes. The necessary measures? Yes, but that means, um, that's, that means he's acting on his insider knowledge. He's acting on his knowledge of the but he unseen. Already did. He already did act. He didn't if, act. If, if he's telling people that, you know what, this person is the one that's going to kill me. He's, he's, he, he already revealed the knowledge. He revealed he it, but he didn't act on it. But still. He didn't I mean, act for, on so, it. For someone, he, for, the, he's jeopardizing the whole Islamic government of that time. Yes, but again, you cannot act on uh, the Imam or the Prophet uh, does not act on their knowledge of the unseen, does not act on their insider knowledge in the sense that the Prophet knew that he's going to be poisoned by so-and-so, but he didn't act on that. He didn't stop the killer, his assassins. Uh, in fact, if he had stopped it, it would have been good. He, uh, the, 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 uh, the divine link would have been preserved, 
the Prophet would have stayed alive and he would continue to receive revelation from Allah uh, Almighty, but uh, he didn't act on that, nor did Allah act on, on, the, on, the, on the unseen knowledge and allowed the assassin to do his, his job, his or her job. Um, therefore, the, the Imam uh, or the Prophet who have no, the knowledge of the unseen do not act uh, according to their knowledge of the unseen. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, and if the, and the, pro the proof of this is that he knew that Ibn Muljim would kill him he revealed that but he didn't stop him and eventually Ibn Muljim killed him okay so other than revealing that knowledge he didn't act on it uh, because uh, they are not meant to do that the whole point is if you like the test people to be tested. They are given the opportunity, they have uh, the opportunity to do right or wrong, and they have the opportunity to uh, make sure, uh, strive to make to be on one side or the other, to mm -hmm. be on the right side or the wrong side. Uh, Ibn Muljim, in, in this test, he, uh, although he was amongst the reciters of the Quran, uh, or the memorizers of the Quran, so and religious. so on, uh, kind of religious. They fought Imam Ali in the Battle of Nahrawan, and he was unfortunate enough uh, to, he was extremely unfortunate, Ashq al Akhirin, to kill the commander of the faithful, who is the brother, brother of Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. Let us keep one thing in mind, and that's, for example, if someone was threatening the head of state of any government right now, let alone Ali Nabi Talib, the commander of the faithful. Someone you know, you have intel, that this person is about to commit murder or is about to assassinate the head of state. At least supervision. Um, At could, least if, for, the, for the people that threaten Ali Nabi Talib. Yeah. There, there are a couple of stories in if, the book. If, about if you have intelligence uh, through normal means, through human means, if you have intelligence that someone is going to kill this head of state, then yes, you, you, you take the necessary measures to prevent that. But this intelligence had come through the unseen, and Imam Ali and the Prophet do mm. not act on that. So did the people that around Imam Ali know about this? That Ibn Mujim was about to, or, or yes, was going to kill? Uh, well, he, when, he, when he revealed that, a lot of his companions wanted to kill Ibn Muljim. Oh, I wouldn't kill him, but the responsibility of the, the guards, the companions of the head of state, mm -hmm. if you want the, the generals, okay. they are responsible for, for the safety and the well-being that, of, of that's, the... That's a very good point, but uh, uh, they didn't... Okay, they were given the knowledge, but they didn't, they didn't seem to... Uh, so it's like a walk in the park for Ibn Muljim. Uh, um, they didn't seem to... Uh, uh, act at least think about it okay the Imam has told us this but um, uh, we should sort of uh, keep uh, watch on every Muslim so they didn't do that I mean this discussion is, is endless because the, the, the knowledge for me I would end it here because the knowledge of Ali Talib isn't compared to our knowledge but what I understand is, is his companions and, and, and their role. But in this book, it is also mentioned that someone threatened Ali ibn Abi Yeah, Abi I'll come Abi. to that in a minute. I mean, after this. Yeah. Threatened? Yeah. I mean, it goes from someone that wants to assassinate someone threatening. Yes. And both of them get away just like that? Yes, he... Well, I mean, as I said, we need... I, I, okay, now that you talk, you're mentioning this, I wanted to talk more about uh, the knowledge of the unseen and the fact that they should behave like an, a, a regular, uh, ordinary. regular ordinary person as far as uh, the unseen is concerned. Um, they shouldn't use the, that knowledge of the unseen. But anyway, now that you mentioned that, yes, we have in the uh, traditions that um, someone actually threatened to kill Imam Ali. And uh, <coughs> Imam Ali um, uh, uh, did not... Uh, Okay, oh, oh, he, he must have been repelled, uh, but did not go on to kill that man. Uh, so, so as soon as they managed to uh, repel the danger of that individual, 
They didn't actually kill him. They didn't do anything to him. So yes, this, this is the, the whole thing. This is the policy of this book. Uh, and the point that the author is trying to make is uh, to highlight these attitude of these leaders of Islam, these true leaders of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali alayhi salam. The whole point is that, that this guy comes along, he threatens to kill him, they repel his danger, and that's it, they don't do any harm to him. The point of this work, uh, which is to, to show the, uh, the attitude and the conduct uh, of uh, these leaders, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa amir al-mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi wa sallam, um, uh, towards their enemies. They, the point is to try to forgive as much as possible. And as soon as they manage to repel the danger of that individual who was trying to kill Imam Ali, uh, that's it, all forgiven. These are the, that's why they say Imam Ali and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi are the embodiment of the teachings of Islam. And we have in the Quran on various occasions when uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs uh, the Prophet and of course the, the faithful to forgive um, as soon as they are out of danger or, or by the grace of Allah uh, uh, to forgive. Even in instances where they see harm, uh, and Allah recommends that, uh, uh, if possible, not seek retribution mm -hmm. and forgive. Even though Allah, and now we're going into different territories, Allah mentions that there we have this principle of basas, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And then he says, if you forgive, it's even better. It's even better. Yes. And, wow. and Imam Ali alayhi salam, in these instances, uh, two instances, at least in the, in the second one, the, the person was actually trying to kill Imam Ali, but he, uh, the danger was repelled and he forgave them and they did nothing to him. He forgave them. Mm. But that individual goes on to creating the Khawarij. Um, that person goes on to create a group that repelled against the government, yeah. caused bloodshed and yeah. wars. Yeah. Yet Ali ibn Abi Talib just forgave. No, you see, does that mean that if he hadn't forgiven that, None of the Kharaj would have been would have happened. Of course, they would have happened. They would have happened, yes. but not in this manner. In in any other manner, they would have still come back and fought at Nahrawan. The Khawarij were. I don't know if they would have came back, but. Well, no, the Khawarij were not nine thousand. This is one individual. So if if Imam Ali had killed that individual, you would have had still the nine thousand or eight thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Okay, uh, there were about nine thousand. If he had killed him who tried to kill Imam Ali, which of course the, he didn't. He was, Imam Ali was saved. His dan the danger of that uh, uh, assailant was repelled. So he actually, eventually, he did not kill. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't justify Imam Ali to kill him. But anyway, not only that, he forgave him. Even let's assume for the sake of argument that he killed him, uh, you still have 9,000 uh, Khawarij. They still come back with even more vengeance mm -hmm. to fight Imam Ali at Nahrawan. Even though they, they fought Imam Ali, with, who was so kind and compassionate to them, if he had killed them, they would have come back with more vengeance. Okay? So, uh, yes, there, is no, there, was no, there would have been no benefit in uh, killing that individual. In fact, it's great if, uh, there is far greater benefit uh, in forgiving him, mm -hmm. because this is, the, uh, this is in accordance with the teachings of Islam, the teachings of the, of the Holy Quran. And... Uh, uh, and with them being the embodiment of, of those leeches, they acted on that. Mm -hmm. In this case, and then in the previous case. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've got more, more cases to come. Inshallah, but that's after the short break. Okay. Uh, if you inshallah, the uh, Respected viewers, do stay tuned uh, for the short break, and we'll be back shortly, so stay tuned. A brief biography of the eminent Islamic authority, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi. He was born on the 20th of the Hijjah in the year 1360 after Hijrah in the holy city of Karbala, Iraq. He was raised and cultured in a family that was renowned 
for its history of learning, striving, sacrifice and morals. He received his specialist education of Islamic sciences at the hands of eminent scholars of the Hausa until he acquired a distinguished degree of Ijtihad. Through his relentless endeavors, he developed himself in the quality of continually seeking knowledge along with unremitting observance of piety. Tirelessly promoting the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, disseminating their culture and defending their sacred laws and sharia. He has written numerous works in various fields on different levels, ranging from politics, economics, history and ethics, to specialist works of Fahawza students on such topics as fiqh and usul, which is also known as jurisprudence, that total more than 80. Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi has been teaching at the Hawza for more than 40 years. He is distinguished for being accessible to the people, directly dealing and meeting with various sectors of members of society, listening to diverse views from different spectrum of the community. Equally, he is distinguished for his humility respecting the young and old, and also for his tolerance in regarding to insult or evil with kindness and courteousness. He is renowned for his independence and for his policy of boycotting despotic governments. He over-observes hundreds of organizations and institutions throughout the globe, for example, those that address social issues such as marriage services and social reforms, those that address humanitarian matters such as clinics, orphanages, financial organizations giving interest-free loans, intellectual institutions such as centers for research and studies, seminaries, houses, libraries, as well as religious centers such as mosques and Husseiniyas. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second part of today's episode as we discuss some of the key points mentioned in the first chapter of Politics, the Very Heart of Islam, written by Sayyid Sadiq al Shirazi. Okay. These topics will be discussed and are discussed with my dear and esteemed guest, Dr. Zahir. Welcome back, Hayyid Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Before the break, we mentioned a couple of stories that somewhat are controversial, but Inshallah, we'll get to a point where we uh, bring the answer that satisfies the question. Now, we talked about how Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, had the unseen knowledge of certain individuals who will either rage war against him or eventually kill him, Ibn Muljam. Like, this is crazy intel. This is precise intel that Ali ibn Talib got. But yet, they weren't allowed to act upon that knowledge. Prophet Muhammad, did he receive the same knowledge? Because in this book also, it does touch upon how some individuals who went into confrontation with Prophet Muhammad ended up fighting Prophet Muhammad and fighting Imam Ali and so on and so forth. So why not prevent, satisfy the, the, the question? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. You, you call it controversial. Um, I uh, call it uh, these uh, conducts uh, uh, show the magnanimity of people like Imam Ali and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Two expressions wa for the same meaning. Um, um, and forgiveness. The whole point of this is to show that uh, Imam Ali and uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi alayhi salam, they uh, uh, forgive or forgave their would-be killers and forgave people who were danger, uh, of danger to their individuals, uh, to their persons. And, um, and this forgiveness is uh, really uh, based on the teachings of the Qur'an. They were the embodiment of the teachings of the Qur'an and the Qur'an uh, 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran on, in numerous, uh, on numerous occasions that uh, uh, they should forgive. Um, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Prophet uh, on various occasions to forgive. Wasfah uh, or wa'fu, turn a blind eye and forgive them. Even those who attempted to kill the Prophet, وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا They attempted to assass assassinate you, uh, but uh, 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 you, uh, you should now that you haven't been killed, you should forgive them. And in the, as I said, in the case of Imam Ali uh, with Ibn Muljim or the other person who actually threatened him, uh, the point is forgiveness. Um, and that shows the magnanimity of the of Imam Ali and, uh, and uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, who are the true leaders of Islam and the true embodiment of the teachings of Islam and the teaching of the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to um, the case that we want to consider um, in this part of the show is uh, that that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, through the knowledge of the unseen. He used to uh, uh, reveal to his people, to his companions, or the people around him. Um, um, I mean, companions, they, it doesn't carry any special uh, status. Uh, companions, just, they happen to be in his company. Yes. And uh, they could have been the, his, uh, his assassins or his enemies. Uh, uh, anyway, he used to reveal to the people around him that uh, um, uh, an individual, a certain individual would cause commotion between the Muslims or he will bring, uh, uh, um, uh, invent a new religion, makes, make an innovation. And not only that, having said that, he would not uh, uh, take any step to eliminate him. N and not only that, he does not allow the Muslims to do, to do any, anything like that to eliminate him, to kill him. On the, given the fact that he had the full knowledge that he will cause uh, a lot of hardship, a lot of commotion, and in fact that individual turned out to be the leader of the Khawarij, wow. who uh, uh, went to, uh, who waged war against Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, at the battle, of, which is known Battle of Nahrawan, an area in southern Iraq known mm -hmm. as Nahrawan. So um, the point is, even though Imam, uh, the Prophet alayhi knew full well that this individual would cause so much damage, but of course, because he hadn't done anything yet, they couldn't do anything to him. This is justice according to Islam. Even though they would, he would be the cause of the death of hundreds, if not thousands of, in fact, thousands of people, thousands of people, this, the, the Khuwai Surah, but uh, because he hadn't done anything at that time, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. Alaihi the Prophet did not issue any instruction. I mean, nowadays you see people who just speak Arabic on an airplane being kicked off of that airplane. And it goes from that to someone who, people know that he is gonna rage war. You know, he, he, he will create an army to fight the state. Yeah, very Yet, unfortunate. No one takes any measures. But yes. now, people haven't even done anything. They get arrested, they get kicked off an airplane, they are being dis discriminated against yeah. in, in various ways. Yes, we, we, in here we're trying to show the justice uh, uh, that we have in Islam, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, in the case of this individual, uh, he hadn't done anything, even though the Prophet ﷺ was sure, uh, given the divine knowledge that he had, that he would do uh, this and that. He would be the cause of a lot of commotion, a lot of battles, uh, uh, and, and a lot of um, uh, loss of life. Uh, but uh, because he hadn't done anything yet, he didn't do anything to him. And not only that, he didn't allow the Muslims to do anything to him at that time. Yeah, so um, this, uh, um, and not only that, this individual, he went, he goes on to 
uh, insult the Prophet, um, uh, accuse the Prophet of injustice. He, uh, it's in the narration in Kitab al-Irshad that uh, when uh, the Prophet was dividing the spoils between the people uh, and he came along, this individual, and said to him, uh, you haven't done it uh, justly. Be just in, your, in, in, the divide, in dividing the, the, the spoils. And the Prophet uh, وسلم, said that, I am just. If I don't do justice, who will then? And what I'm doing is correct. Uh, the, the, the people around him, at least the, the faithful, around the Prophet were very angered by his accusation, by the Khuwaisara's accusation, and they attempted to murder him, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa stopped them. Even though he had insulted the Prophet and he had accused the Prophet of uh, an act of in, uh, 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 injustice, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a grave accusation, mm -hmm. still the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa did Forgive. not Forgave them, forgave him, and, and prevented the Muslims from doing anything wrong to him, uh, any, any, any harm to him. Fully understandable. Yeah. So when someone insults me, I have the chance of forgiving him. Yeah. When someone, you know, calls me names, it's up to me either, either I forgive or I punish. Mm -hmm. But for someone, I know you have a, another story. Mm -hmm. uh, but for someone to take it to the next level, where I know. Mm -hmm. that this individual is going to harm me and the people that are surrounding me. Yeah. Yeah, I let him go. Yeah. But There's a verse in the Quran that I want to mention, but after you, uh, you continue. Yes. Uh, the answer says that at that moment, he hadn't done. He hasn't done anything. Yes, he will, be kill he will be the cause of the killing of thousands of people, so, but at the moment he hasn't done anything. So we I know he will for, for sure he will yeah. be doing it, but he hasn't done it now. So the Prophet could not do anything to him there. So we understand, I mean, through this act, the, the, the level of justice um, that that government had, I mean, for some, it takes patience. It takes a lot I of mean, patience. For, for, for someone to know such and information perseverance. and perseverance as well. And that's one of the key points, uh, the key principles. Strength uh, of the Prophet uh, Strength of the Prophet that, that I mentioned in this book. Um, but, you know, as, as I mentioned, for someone to know such information, and yet, still let the individual walk. If such things happened in our world today, mm. we would move forward. We would develop in every means. Yeah. I don't think there will ever be crimes anymore. There, there will be crimes, but not, not to that extent. No, there will be crimes. There probably will but, be even more crimes through forgiveness. No, no, you, no. You, not, not you the lessen. act of forgiveness. Not the act of forgiveness. Yeah, but it's through forgiveness that you lessen the, Im the, the, the impact of crime. Because when you... Uh, uh, the more retribution and killing there is, the more... It will generate even more. So, in fact, is, why is forgiveness regarded, uh, considered to be uh, an act of... Uh, a virtuous act, a good act? Because it has benefits. Because the uh, long-term consequences and impact of forgiveness far outweighs the uh, the, the short-term uh, uh, measures or the consequences of the measures that if you if you, if you were you weren't going to forgive. So, and it's a as I said, it's a major uh, uh, fundamental issue in Islam and in the Quran, the act of forgiveness and the Prophet is uh, the first one, or should be, and of course he is the first one to act, to behave accordingly, and uh, forgive uh, people who commit, uh, do wrong to him. Mm -hmm. But coming back to this, he, the Prophet, even though he knew what uh, he is going to do, for sure, mm -hmm. he couldn't do anything, and, uh, and he wanted to stick to justice, and justice is absolutely uh, essential. It's one of the most important aspects in the teachings of Islam and there is no way they could deviate people like uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and people like Imam Ali alayhi salam they could no way deviate from justice by one iota um, and uh, uh, they are the embodiment of justice 
and there is no way they could they could have done otherwise. Now we do have a couple of more minutes before we conclude the episode. So if you do have anything, any extra points uh, that you would like to add to this discussion, uh, feel free. Yes, uh, another one uh, incident that took place uh, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa which is very important, and it reveals. Uh, it shows the stance of the Prophet and uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, also fortunately one of his companions, so-called companion. Uh, it is narrated that uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dispatched uh, uh, Khalid ibn Walid with a group of Muslims uh, to go and call for Islam and teach Islam to uh, the tribe of Bani Judaima. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they had become Muslim beforehand. So they were, they were going to them as Muslims. And specifically, the Prophet ﷺ obviously uh, ordered them not to engage in any fighting. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, the reference is given in here in the book, which is uh, Al-Kamil fi tarikh volume 2, page 173. Mm -hmm. um, but when Khalid ibn Walid got there, uh, to the tribe of uh, Bani, Bani Judaima, uh, he used the sword against them and he killed a number of them. Uh, and because of some dispute or argument that they had in pre-Islamic time, uh, and it was an act out of vengeance, th that news reached the Prophet And the Prophet was very distressed and he actually wept because of that, of those killings. And he got up and he uh, went up to the, the pulpit, the member, and he raised his hand to the sky. And three times he said, Oh Allah, I dis disassociate myself from the conduct of Khalid ibn Walid. <clears throat> and he repeated it again. Oh Allah, I disassociate myself from the <clears throat> conduct of Khalid ibn Walid. And for the third time, I disassociate myself from the conduct of Khalid ibn Walid. Um, because obviously he did something which is which was totally wrong. Is that enough? Absolutely uh, unacceptable. Is no, that it's, enough? It's not enough. Let me just finish. The Prophet then called Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he gave him uh, a box which had uh, gold coins in it, and he said to him, "Go to Bani Judaima and pay pay them expiation or dear <coughs> compensation for uh, all the damage and the the killing that has had." that taken place uh, by Khalid. Mm -hmm. So uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam came to them and he uh, gave, um, first of all he gave compensation for those who've been killed, for those who've been killed by Khalid ibn Walid. He gave the compensation to uh, their uh, heirs. For each one who was murdered by Khalid ibn Walid, <coughs> Imam Ali paid them 1,000 gold dinar okay and 1000 gold dinar is about it said in the footnote is about three and a quarter kilograms of pure gold three kilograms and a quarter kilograms of pure gold this was for every individual who was murdered by Khalid bin Walid and then <coughs> uh, he, he paid compensation for every uh, slave uh, that they had who was who was murdered mm -hmm. and then he also paid compensation for everything that they'd lost including uh, the pots from which the dogs drank water the pots which were broken the dog the pots which uh, dogs drank water from which were broken in the course of this uh, fighting and in the course of this assault even even uh, the pots mm -hmm. and uh, even the ropes which were which were cut, Imam Ali paid compensation for. So mm -hmm. every every minute thing, everything, every damage which was caused to them, physical damage, was Imam re they re encompassed it to the people. To the people of Benin. Okay. What happened to Khalid Walid? Okay, let, let me finish the list of, of the thing. Mm -hmm. And he also yeah. he also paid damage he, he paid for compens compensation for things which uh, he asked them what have you lost they said these are the things which we've lost and uh, he uh, uh, he asked he also paid them extra 
for cases for the things which they have lost or things which have been uh, damaged which they, are, they may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. So on top of the compensation which he paid for all the damages caused, he paid compensation for the things which they may not, at that time, they may not be aware of. Probably they would have discovered later on. And then he also paid compensation for the terror and the fear felt by the women and children. Because can, you can imagine people come, assault them, riding their horses, wielding their swords, and hitting, hitting the men um, in the camp, women and children would be terrified. Imam Ali alayhi salam paid compensation for the terror caused to the women and children. And it says that they, they, he paid compensation for any uh, property which they may have, which may, may have been damaged in the, in, the, in, the, in the course of this assault. And then he paid compensation in order to be contended with the Prophet in order to be pleased with the Prophet. So after the f all the physical damage, after all the mental and psychological damage which he paid the compensation for, he wanted to seek their pleasure and their contentment with the Prophet towards the Prophet So he paid the money for that. And then he paid um, it says that he paid the money in order to be happy. Given the sadness mm -hmm. that they, they, they sustain. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, these were the eight categories uh, of, uh, of money or compensation that Imam Ali Ali Salam gave uh, to the people of Ben Judaim. Mm -hmm. That's all great. Okay. People, whatever they lost, Prophet Muhammad compensated and they gave them money instead. And of course, beforehand, Prophet Muhammad dissociated himself from the conduct of Khalid ibn Walid. From the conduct of Khalid ibn Walid. But Allah states in the Holy Quran, if someone murders one individual or causes corruption in earth as, is, as if he has killed all of mankind. Mm -hmm. Now, Khalid ibn Walid did not just cause corruption. He killed people, mm -hmm. both of them together. Mm -hmm. Yet Rasulullah, the only thing he can do was raise his hand and dissociate himself from Khalid ibn Walid? Well, that wasn't the only thing. As I said, they were, he, he paid and he, and he paid the people. Yeah. Okay. But such things, when they go unpunished, yeah. other people, they just learn the same way. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, if he didn't get punished, then Prophet Muhammad, you know, bought the pleasure of them. Mm -hmm. I will do the same thing and Prophet Muhammad will pay instead of me. Yeah. Uh, well, no. I mean that that's a, 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 an argument which is a, a vexatious argument. And uh, but the point is, yes, what you what you're saying is that why didn't he he committed murder, and according to Islam, retribution for, for that, eye, no? an eye for an eye, and, and, a, and, a, and a life for life. Uh, so he committed murder. He should have been killed. And that has been raised uh, among the scholars as to why. Uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi did not uh, go on to uh, uh, e uh, kill, execute uh, Khalid bin Walid for uh, murdering innocent people, for murdering people who are absolutely innocent. They had nothing to do with it. They didn't deserve to die, and uh, he killed them. Um, first of all, uh, the the reasons stated in here is that uh, are that first of all uh, uh, the guardian of the deceased or Bani Judaima themselves mm -hmm. they, they did not seek uh, the death penalty for Khalid so that is the first thing um, and uh, and therefore the 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 sentence commutes to compensation First of all, the sentence for that, for the conduct for, for Khalid, who committed murder of the innocent, is death penalty according to Islam without any hesitance. But because they didn't seek the death penalty, the, the next of kin, if you like, the Bani Judaima didn't seek death penalty for Khalid, it comes used to compensation. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, these compensations should be paid by Khalid bin Walid, but because he was a a murderous individual, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi, uh, he resorted to paying the compensation uh, because he is the Prophet of mercy, 
وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين العالمين. Um, secondly, last point, if you can. Um, We're running short on time. Uh, okay, the, the number of points, uh, the last point which I can make is basically um, is the issue of competing priorities. Um, uh, if uh, the Prophet were to execute uh, Khalid for, for the murders which he deserved, um, for the murders he committed, the execution or the killing would he, he, he deserved, uh, this may have caused uh, uh, uncertainty among the Muslims, the new Muslims, that, and, and on, on those grounds, uh, the Prophet because of competing priorities, so it is more prudent to uh, not, up, up, uh, not ex exercise this uh, right of uh, execution, but uh, commute it to um, the, to a lesser uh, compensation, a lesser status, which is compensation mm -hmm. uh, for the for the dead. Okay, I would like to thank you very much for joining us. Last point made today is that through the actions of Prophet Muhammad and Imam Ali, hence we don't have any pre-attempted Islam. That's what I understood. And uh, through the actions of such thank individuals, you. forgiveness is one of the key points uh, which Islam is based on. I would like to thank you very much for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept your deeds. Respected viewers, thank you very much for tuning in today. Hopefully we can understand what Islam has to offer for its nation and what Islam has to offer in the advancement of the entire world. I am Ahmed Ali. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.